yeah, yeah. I know that things are tough, but we will make it out. Dominica, we all gonna make it one day. The pressures of the system make us lose around. Oh, yeah, we all gonna make it one day. Yeah, listen now. There's something that I wanna say to you. You get me so angry. Yeah, man, this is Emma Moses, you know, and you're watching Sad News, the People's Choice, yeah? Make it bless, make it bless, make it bless. Love. Welcome to SAT TV's news. I am Shana Esprit, your presenter. In our top stories, gay men among majority infected with HIV. Former minister taking St. Kitts Nevis PM to court. Italy ex-Prime Minister Bolosconi in angry tirade at jail ruling. And in sports, Hornets secure spot in Pizza Hut Division 2 finals. Details of these will follow. Welcome back. Minister of Health Honorable Julius Timothy says drug abuse is a major challenge for us in Dominica. It is a major public health problem that affects Dominica's society in all areas of life, he noted. Mr. Timothy said the majority of our citizens are affected either directly or indirectly by the use and abuse of drugs. There is a, not a sim single person in this country who is not aware of the existence as it occurs in our neighborhood, our family, and friends are involved. The media, prints and otherwise, is full of stories about incidents related to substance abuse. Brothers and sisters, substance abuse is a cross costly problem for our society in Dominica. According to the MP, in order to adequately deal with this issue, the general public and the government must work together in an effort to control and eliminate the factors that cause drug abuse. He informed that the Ministry of Health is aware that the effects of drug abuse are far-reaching. Healthcare workers are constantly exposed to the danger of persons under the influence of dangerous drugs. The risk of providing care at the casualty or <coughs> acute psychiatric unit is rising as persons lose control of the mental faculties. This workshop will provide the participants for better understanding of how to respond to our brothers and sisters who become mentally held, ill as a result of drug and drug abuse. As soon as I became the Minister of Health, I pointed out to our drug prevention officers that all it takes is a visit to certain places in the Roseau area and the reality of drug abuse will be visible, he stated. It's right there in front of all of us. I mean, people like me, I go in the nooks and crannies of a society, so I know, I see 
everything. And I point out to them what are the what we must look for. Not forget all the the, the the international literature and all the things we read and so on. The things are right there in front of all of us. The Ministry of Health will continue to assist in decreasing cases of substance and drug abuse in Dominica. In more news, the first annual Eggleston Heritage Festival will commence from Saturday 3rd to Monday 5th August 2013. The event will be held in collaboration with the Cultural Division as part of the Emancipation Celebration Program. The Heritage Festival will include exhibitions, vending booths and entertainment, including a pageant promoting Eggleston's cultural and traditional art form and lifestyle. Proceeds made by the committee will go towards community development activities. We like live action mm -hmm. and that's what we are bringing again this time. When we thought of, okay, having a festival, something to highlight Eggleston more, you know, and to show off the skills and talents of our, our people, we thought, let's go heritage. And I think it's because to we, our parents, the Ridgefield Estate was everything for them. Most of Eggleston was the Ridgefield Estate. That's where they worked. That's where we got our water from. That's where life was. So they've been united. The event will be hosted annually. The first donations will be towards the upgrade of the playing field and the pavilion at Gladys Park in Eggleston. The official opening of the festival will be on Saturday, 3rd August at 3 p.m. at the Heritage site. Mm, we go down and have some special displays from some of the workers, those who worked on the estate. They are going to do a reenactment of estate life. That will be something to see. And they'll also take up their positions in special places and you will hear more from them as you move through the, the exhibition site. Um, in the night, we will have old time, old time, old time action, old time dancing, and um, the vending booths will continue until maybe about 10, 11. You know, we won't want to disturb too much, but we are happy. So we will be vending, we'll be dancing, we'll be enjoying ourselves. Self and community enhancement projects including a summer day camp project with the Youth Development Division and the Drug Education Unit, a fun day, pageant, traditional Juve street jam, landscaping, beautification projects, among others, will take place prior to the three-day event. We have lots to offer. You will be greeted with a lovely arch in front of Lincoln's house, and he has his rose garden and his, you know, um, local idol booth then you pass in front of the health center and you pass through a lovely ticket booth all traditional like and you enter our masterpiece kainu our bamboo house which will really be there not just for the festival we intend to continue doing things there having creole breakfast having educational sessions having lots of entertainment it's just a place where we will gather keep ourselves together to show off more for our skills and talents to have tourists and other people from Dominica visit. The general public is invited and is assured by Miss Alexander that it will be a weekend of fun and entertainment. In other news according to the acting fire department public relations officer Mr. Wayne Lita crowd control is a serious problem which can mean the difference between life and death. This statement came after many curious onlookers gathered on the scene of a fire in the capital city on Wednesday, July 31st, all busy to catch a glimpse of the injured or the incident scene. The fire completely destroyed a barber shop and caused serious damage to a nearby building. Mr. Leta said because of the large crowd that had gathered at the scene, it was difficult to gain quick access to the nearest fire hydrants for water. Even when faced with such situations, time is of the essence, so there is never any time to argue with the crowd. It always prevents any rescue. It doesn't have to be at a fire scene, accident, uh, rescue mission, anywhere else. Any first responder and you have crowd available, 
he has crowd is present, you always have some obstruction. So one of the things that we do, we advise people. Yes, on Lucas and sometimes, who knows, sometimes, listen, the responders may ask an on Lucas to assist. So, but we, we cannot, and we have tried it, that fire officers try to do crowd control. But having five fire officers available, we need all of them on hand. We cannot do, so we leave crowd control for agencies like the police. So as soon as the police arrived, my instruction to them was, help us with the crowd. He said the public needs to know that they need help as well. So curious onlookers should be mindful of their presence on the scene of any incident and should be in a mindset to assist, not obstruct. Mr. Leta continued that one can never be fully prepared to take on a fire. Therefore, the firefighters are constantly involved in training exercises. The fire officers have to make use of the basic equipment available. However, there is always need for more and new advanced equipment. Public is helping, but anytime you come within the fire scene area, the, area, the incident area, one of the things that you have done is additional responsibility on the officer in charge. And yesterday, for example, yes, they were of good faith doing what they were doing. But guess what? At the same time, the fire officers had to ensure that they who were within the cordon area were safe. So when the police put on the cordon, I want to advise people, please respect that yellow tape that they have put. I would be happy if one day going to a fire or responding to an accident scene that a civilian would engage in crowd control so that the firemen can effectively carry out their duties, Mr. Leta explained. So please wait until the officer has said it is safe to access the area with caution. Please wait on that and try to control ourselves. Everybody wants the pictures. We know that. Everybody wants to email DN or the vibes or their family. We know that. But do it from a safe distance and not within the firefighting area. I would want to advise Dominicans, please respect safety rules. And safety comes first in everything that we do, especially at a fire scene. For their own safety, the public can and should keep in safe distance at all times especially before a scene has been declared secure to enter by the firemen. In more stories, since the first case of the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, was detected in Dominica in 1987, till the end of 2012, it had been reported that men were in the majority testing positive for HIV. This information was revealed by national epidemiologist Dr. Paul Ricketts. But we do also do have uh, females be testing positive, um, and it, so this is not just a, a, an epidemic affecting men who have sex with men. Although yes, this is the men who have sex with men are the, the main people affected uh, in our uh, epidemic here in Dominica. You note also that uh, over the past uh, four or five years that there's been an upward trend in the number of people who have been tested, we've been identified as positive. And this may be an impact, I believe, is partly due to increased uh, numbers of people being tested through the various campaigns, uh, through the availability of rapid testing throughout the length and breadth of Dominica, and important to say also free of cost. Toward the end of 2012, up to 400 persons 70% of those infected had been tested positive for HIV, he said. After the introduction of the antiretroviral therapy in 2004, there was a rapid decline in the number of deaths. But over the years, there has been a slight increase. We're still investigating the, 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 the uh, rationale or the reason behind this, but we do have a well-organized, well-structured uh, treatment and care program uh, of course, there's always room for improvement, but a lot of it begins with the testing and ensuring that the treatment is available uh, free of cost or close to free of cost uh, for all those who need to. And uh, at the moment, we have 70 persons uh, in treatment in Dominica or thereabouts.
Dr. Ricketts noted their success in preventing mother-to-child transmission of the virus. He said between 2001 and 2012, although a number of mothers tested positive for the virus, there were no cases of transmission to their offsprings. The doctor noted Dominica is well on its way of reaching a regional goal to eliminate mother-to-child transmission of HIV and expectantly syphilis. Testing about 85% of our women, uh, pregnant women at the moment, according to the statistics that we have. Of course, this needs to be 100%, and I take this opportunity to call and to remind all uh, pregnant women to have an HIV test done. Uh, there, we, you, we've seen the figures, we have demonstrated that we have the capacity here in Dominica to prevent transmission to babies, but we can only do so if people get the test. We can identify you if you're positive and make treatment available. About one, between one and three percent of our, preg of our pregnant women test positive for syphilis. Um, however, this is on well, the screening test for syphilis, I should say, rather than the, 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 um, the definitive test. And so one of this, the uh, areas for strengthening is actually to develop uh, um, greater access to a, a confirmatory test for syphilis, hopefully here in Dominica as well. And so that's one of the things we're looking at as we move forward. Again, tr seeking to eliminate the transmission of uh, mother-to-child transmission of, of he added they have seen an average of two to four cases of tuberculosis from 2003 to 2012. However, there has been an increase of between 8 and 10 cases for the years 2005, 2006, 2010 and 2012. Although those infected with this disease are in the minority, the effect of a single case of TB is quite significant. There are a lot of resources that would have to be used to combat the disease, find its resource, and try to eliminate the source of its infection. This is an area that needs strengthening, he concluded. In other news, in a recent press conference held by the United Workers Party, its current leader, Honorable Edison James, revealed that he will be stepping down as political leader and will not be seeking re-election in the next general elections, constitutionally due in 2005. This announcement followed wide speculation that investigative journalist Lennox Linton was the main sought after to fill Mr. James's position. Mr. James confirmed this saying, the people of Marigot will put their support behind Mr. Linton. One can't go on forever, he said speaking on the topic of his retirement from politics, but will continue to support the people of Marigot. The party is expected to host a delegates conference on September 1st, where the new leader of the United Workers Party will be elected. The delegates conference will be held on the 1st of September uh, in, in gas groups. The General Council has to be directed. The General Council is the body which determines the date and, and place of the, of the delegates conference or the uh, the annual convention, actually the annual convention comprising the delegates conference and the convention rally if the council deems it appropriate. At the delegates conference, they will also address the election of officers of the party who will work towards the interest of the people. Mr. James noted the general secretary will give a report on the activities of the party for the last year, while the president of the youth and women's arm will deliver addresses. We also expect acceptance remarks from the new political leader, said Mr. James. There's been no nomination so far. The process involves the nomination committee meeting, and it will do so sometime around the middle of, of August this month. And the nominations committee comprises the chairman of the uh, constituent associations. There is a chairman of the nominations committee, and um, we expect that committee to meet sometime around the middle of the month. I will make nominations. Uh, with respect to the filling of the various posts, officers' posts, and that there will be the opportunity for nominations on the floor. So really, it, will, it will only be after the nominations committee has reported and the, the delegates conference on the floor. I have the opportunity to nominate others that we will know who are the candidates for 
uh, the various positions in the party. He promised to ensure the United Workers Party under its new leadership does everything in its power to gain the confidence of the people and to steer the country on the right path. Mr. James concluded saying this conference is very important for the party and the country to making a change as change is inevitable. In other stories, in remembrance and honor of the contributions of African slaves on Dominica's social, economic, cultural and historical development, a new monument has been unveiled. The unveiling of the Neg Mawa Emancipation Monument was just one of the many activities which marked the emancipation celebrations on Thursday, 1st August. Chief Cultural Officer Raymond Lawrence noted that as a nation, it is important to be aware of our history and culture, to understand where we came from and what contributed to who we are today. So this is why it is critical as a nation that we know all our history, which I should add also includes the Kalinago history as well. But we must remember that thousands of enslaved Africans were brought to Dominica through the Middle Passage. The tremendous hardships they endured from the time they were captured in Africa to their unspeakable suffering on the ships on their transatlantic journey to the Caribbean Mr. Lawrence said it is important to recognize the hardship that these slaves endured and the contributions they have made to our lives and culture. Meanwhile, Honorable Ambrose George, who represented Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerid, said the 175th anniversary of full emancipation is an important milestone for Dominica. We are gathered here today to pay tribute in a tangible way to the memory of our ancestors those who slaved in the fields and in the estates, houses, those who resisted slavery in various ways, and those who went further by reclaiming their freedom and took to our forests and from their wage wars of resistance to the slave system. According to Mr. George, we have a task to rewrite our history and tell a real story from our perspective. We must stop regurgitate the stories that perpetuate the hero-centric view of the stories that demonize our heroes. August 1st marked the 175th anniversary of full emancipation. The monument was built by architect Franklin Zamo. Other stories. Public Relations Officer Inspector John Carbon has confirmed the death of a French national who drowned at the Tito Gorge on Thursday, August 1st. 39-year-old Cedric Charlie Gombo, a French national, was pronounced dead on arrival at the Princess Margaret Hospital Accident and Emergency Department on July, sorry, that's August 1, 2013, about 3.10 p.m. Cedric, who was holidaying in Dominica, was in the company of his family and friends at Tito Gorge when he encountered difficulty while swimming. CPR was administered to him by his friends, but was unsuccessful. He was transferred to the hospital by the fire and ambulance services where he was pronounced dead. Coroner's inquest will be convened and a post mortem will follow. Investigations are continuing. In other news, the Dominica Police Force has recovered yet another drug bust for the year 2013. Head of the Drug Squad Unit and a Public Relations Officer, Inspector John Carbon, has more details. August 2, 2013, about 10.45 a.m., members of the Drug Squad and the Customs K-9 Unit found and seized 30 kilos of cocaine in an abandoned concrete oven at Kittisburg. There was no arrest. However, the investigations continue. The estimated street value of the drug seized is over $1.4 million. We remain resolute in the fight against illegal drugs, and we will continue to hunt them wherever they are. More news. Plans are on the way to transform the Dominica Export-Import Agency, Dexia, 
to export Dominica, according to Minister of Trade, Employment, Industry and Diaspora Affairs, Honorable Colin McIntyre. Dr. McIntyre noted that this new organization will aid in guiding trade in the country. This transformation from Dexia to Export Dominica was initially highlighted by Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt during the 2012 to 2013 national budget. We have been having a lot of meetings and planning and we are now on the, on the, on the stage whereby we are going to move into Export Dominica. We now have the power to establish, we now have funds from the CARICOM Development Fund whereby we are going to be operationalizing these um, units. And what we made at is providing necessary equipment for it, providing the staffing for it so we can run it. And Together with the Bureau of Standards, the necessary principles are in place to develop agricultural exports. Some of the exports go to countries including San Martin, Guadeloupe and Antigua. What we want to do here in this um, national export strategy, not only look at agriculture, we're looking at the, our cultural industries, we're looking at agriculture, we're looking at mining, we're looking at tourism, we're looking at a few of them. But for me, the initial one we want to run with is agriculture. The Community Emergency Response Team search program was an all-risk, all-hazard training exercise. This valuable course was designed to help individuals uh, provide for themselves, family, colleagues, and other members of the community and was held over the period July 29th to August 2nd. The curtains were fittingly drawn on a one-week all-risk and hazard training exercise facilitated by the Office of Disaster Management earlier today. Some 42 persons who benefited from the exercise received a certificate of participation. Addressing the closing ceremony, Acting National Coordinator Don Corriette called for a cert day to keep participants busy and their interest going. That you have just confirmed yourself in history, but you have set the standard, more importantly, and the impetus for the other set courses to follow. And you should feel extremely proud of this achievement and this milestone. Having experienced the camaraderie, the seriousness, sometimes too serious, the dedication, the commitment, the loyalty, the interest, but more import importantly, the teamwork used to solving the problems that you were confronted with, not only as individual teams, but as a collective that really convinced us at the ODM that we are on the right track in providing you with such training. Chief Fire Officer Josiah Dupuis described the participants as trailblazers and advised that they take the lead to advance the cause of the Community Emergency Response Team. The first one I have here is that you should remain engaged and active. I have myself been on a few training programs and one of the things that instructors always advise participants to do is to take the information that you've just learned and return home. As a matter of fact, the value of training is not just what you've gotten, but how much you go into yourself. Use that information to share with others and to ensure that it is put into practice when a particular situation arises. So you have to remain engaged and you have to remain active. Brigadale Center retired Earl Arthurs of the Caribbean Emergency Disaster Management Office in Barbados described the training as a balanced one. What we, we tried to do was to expose you all to a number of processes, procedures and guidelines, activities that will assist you on your journey to being a good CERT team member and eventually for some people even CERT instructors. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Security Steve Hyacinth also addressed the function. He gave the ministers undertaking to provide support for the participants and their communities. Ms. Dorita Challenger of Group 2 was adjudged the course's most outstanding participant. Well, the course was very educational. First of all, we started on the 29th and ended on the 2nd. We had a lot of 
well training to do which honestly there is things I like personally and seeing that I could not help so much while carrying stretchers or heavy load although I help now and then I would like motivate my team shout and say we can do it we can do it let's go let's go and you know keep shouting at the top of my voice keep up keep up and then there we had our um, supervisor Mr. Warrington who is also a very motivated person and active person so he helped us a lot too. For Sat TV's news, I am Joseph Thomas. In entertainment, Dominica's reigning carnival queen, Miss Les Lassa Amor Schillingford, will be taking part in the Miss Jaycee's Queen Show 2013 in Antigua today, Friday 2nd. Miss Schillingford recently captured the Miss Carival 2013 crown in St. Vincent, and the Dominica public is now anticipating continued success at her upcoming shows. In support of the Dominican delegate, the Anchorage Hotel will be carrying the show live at the property on Friday, August 2nd, 2013 from 8 p.m. The viewing of the Miss Jaycee's Queen Show 2013 at the Anchorage Hotel will be free to the public. The Discover Dominica Authority, through the Dominica Festivals Committee, continues to show its support to our representatives at the regional pageants, and encourages the general public to give support to Ms. Schillingford in her upcoming shows. For further details, please contact the Anchorage Hotel at 448-2638. This has been the local segment of the news. Coming up next, regional highlights. Now I see all the vibes happening, but honestly, for the past time they are not getting the recognition they deserve. The people on them that are able to do something, they've seen it as just phone and free up the you know, as, you know, some serious thing. Now look at Jamaica and all them places there, where sports have the, 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 the um, island on them on top. You see Bolton and all them man, and we have talent here that can carry the country, but they think all is, um, you know, is tourism and is um, big and dash and all thing there, but sports is very important. To be honest, I don't think so, you know. I think we can do much more for the, for the youths and them. It's not only just the um, financial part of it, but the basic infrastructure, the way we, the way we, the way we, rec we look at sports, because we look at sports as if like sports are things for people to not stupid and stuff like that. So, and I believe even in the school system, sports gets the least recognition. For like sports is a thing you do after the fact. Sports is just in um, talk. When you look on the ground, the people who are supposed to be taking care of the sports, they are uh, not doing anything. I believe, apart from sports, the health, the health benefits you can get from sports is overlooked. Um, we're not training our, our students for the future. And even the diet, <laughs> sports diet, diet for sports, we can go into this. Sports and music, but sports in general. We need a little more, need a little, need much more. You no, know, we need nice for them, for them, for them to use to see the sports one of them yeah. being raised up high so they can see and get their attention. So get themselves to take part in it. That's what we need. We need to see some banners of our national players and them. Our teams need to see some national banners, some banners all over town. When they come to the airport, you need to see. Our, our, you know, our basketball national team, you need to know who them players are, we don't know who they are. And when you don't know who they are, then the, the youths and them, they're checking like that, they're getting no, no recognition, so they're going to do other things. We're riding the bicycle and going free up on the streets, yeah? We should take sports as a business. And sports can really change lives because we are, we are visiting it in the other countries. Look at that, how many of our athletes out there on scholarships? Be it track and field, be it football, be it cricket, be it basketball. So I believe we as a nation, we can do much more for it. That's why I give the thumbs up to what the club organizers of the National Juvenile League. I give them a thumbs up. The miniature sports start going on the ground. There are guys who are available who can have lots of ideas. They could go to the football academies. They could go to the other guys who are interested in sports that can give a lot of ideas. We need to have a national consultation, and from that, hit the ground running.
Me say we just get the remedy for the pain on them. Me just get the remedy for bad mind and jealousy. Who have you seen me dead? Me just get the remedy, suck TV, jam and say, jam and say. You don't know a Javinche you watching suck TV. Lord, is it? Straight triple doors. Have you ever wanted to order on the internet but don't own a credit card or you're just fed up of the high prices of items locally? Well, the solution is Kemet's Online Services. Kemet's Online Services. Order a wide variety of items and get your items in as quick as 5 to 10 days. For placing orders or for more information, call 614-9550. The sky's the limit with Kemet's Online Services.